Hi everyone, this is Lawrence Bell and welcome to my channel. For this video, I will be discussing integration by parts and some examples on how to use this. One of the first questions that people ask is, when do we use integration by parts? And when do we apply it? Um, so my answer for this one is, whenever you have two functions of x or two basic functions that are being multiplied but can't be expanded, that's when you apply the integration by parts. So what do I mean by that? For example, say you have the integral of x squared multiplied by x minus 1 dx. This one, say you have two functions, u is x squared and then v is x minus 1, but then this one can easily be expanded. So that means Integration by parts may not be the best way to solve this because this one is easily solvable. So, when then do we use this? This is typically used when an algebraic function is paired with a transcendental function. For example, say if you want to integrate an exponential function multiplied to an algebraic function or say a logarithmic function ln of x multiplied to an algebraic function x minus 1 dx this one we can use integration by parts or if you have a trigonometric function say um, and an algebraic function x tangent of x dx this is where we can use integration by parts because you can't expand it anymore or an inverse trigonometric function coupled with an exponential function so e to the x arc tangent of x dx maybe we can use integration by parts on this or say an algebraic function multiply to an inverse trigonometric function, say an arc, arc tangent of x dx, we can use integration by parts. So, basically what we have here is a combination of these functions, logarithmic functions, inverse trigonometric functions, algebraic function, trigonometric function, and exponential function. So when you have a pairing of these two functions, you may use integration by parts. The formula that we'll be using is the integral of u with respect to v is equal to u times v minus integral of v with respect to u. Take note that u and v are both functions of x. Now, since there are two functions, how do we know which one to prioritize and use as your letter u? For the prioritization of letter u, Earlier, I gave you five different functions. First is logarithmic, followed by in inverse trigonometric, followed by algebraic, trigonometric, and exponential. So for the prioritization, it starts from logarithmic downwards. So for example, you have a combination of logarithmic and an algebraic. Your u would be the logarithmic. You have a combination of algebraic and exponential. Let your u be the algebraic and then the dv would be the exponential so to show you what i mean let's go to some examples so for the first one what you have here is a combination of algebraic 2x and logarithmic so according to the uh, acronym here you have logarithmic and algebraic since L is the one on top, let's assume U be equal to the logarithmic. And then the DV would then be the algebraic, whatever's left. So 2x dx. Therefore, in order to have complete parts, we need the differential U and we need the V. So for this one, this becomes 1 over x minus 1 dx. Whereas this one just becomes x squared. So using the formula uv 
minus the integral of v du, this one would then be u is ln of x minus 1 times v, v, which is x squared, minus the integral of v du, so x squared, all over x minus 1 dx. So this one, looking at the second term, this can easily be integrated. However, it's an improper fraction. So that means we have to use division on this. So dividing x squared by x minus 1, you'll have x squared minus x. So this one gives us an x, x minus 1, 1. So rewriting this one, the integral of x plus 1 plus 1 all over x minus 1 with respect to x. So this becomes x squared ln of x minus 1 minus, this is simply power rule, x squared over 2 minus x minus ln of x minus 1 plus c. So we were able to apply integration by parts. Let us go to another example. You have the integral of arctan of x dx. Some of you might ask, it's only arctan. Um, where is the other function? We can say that 1 dx, 1 is algebraic, so you have an inverse trigonometric and an algebraic function. Therefore, your u would then be the inverse trig function. Therefore, the dv is simply dx. If you have the, this is the u, the d would then be 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. The v would then be an x. And then applying integration by parts, which is uv minus the integral of v du. Let's plug everything in. u times v, so that's x arctangent of x minus the integral of v du. It's this one. So this second one can be integrated by simple means. This is basically an ln. So if the u is 1 plus x squared, the du is simply 2x dx. So that means we just need a 2 on top and then we bring out one half. So that can be integrated as one half ln of one plus x squared and then plus c. So let's just copy the first term. x arctangent of x minus one half ln of one plus x squared plus c. So this is the final answer. Another example, let's have this one, a combination of algebraic and exponential. So based on that, we have algebraic and exponential. Since A comes first, that means the prioritization for U is the algebraic portion, Y. And then the DV is E to the Y dy. So if this is the U, the DU is simply dy. If this is the dv, the v is simply e to the y. So applying integration by parts, uv minus the integral of v du. So uv y <coughs> e to the y minus the integral of v du. So this one is sim simply an exponential function which can easily be integrated. So y e to the y minus e to the y plus c is your final answer. So for another example, let's have this. So for this one, what you have is an exponential and a trigonometric function. So let's check them. You have an exponential and trigonometric. So following the, the acronym, the t comes first. So let's say u would then be the trigonometric, trigonometric component. So that's sine of x and then the dv 
would then be e to the x dx. So with this, the differential of u is cosine of x dx, whereas the v is e to the x. So applying integration by parts, that's uv minus integral of v du, this one would then be e to the x sine x minus integral of v, which is e to the x du, which is cos of x dx. The thing is, the integral that you have now here still is another combination of two functions which can't be expanded. So what we do here is maybe we can apply another integration by parts. So looking at the um, acronym, it's still another trigonometric and exponential. For that, your u is another trigonometric, so it's cosine of x, and then the dv is e to the x dx. So the new du is negative sine of x dx, and then the new v is e to the x. So let's apply trigon um, integration by parts again. Let's copy this first, e to the x, sine of x minus, and then this one, the whole integral, would then be replaced by uv, which is e to the x, cosine of x, minus the integral of v du, so e to the x. And then since this is negative, I'll just change the sign here, dx. So let's remove first the grouping symbols, e to the x, sine x, minus e to the x, cosine of x, minus the integral of e to the x, sine x dx. Now, when you look at the um, integrand, it's still another combination of exponential and trigonometric. However, looking back at the question, isn't it that this question actually is the same as the integrand, the resulting integrand. So maybe what we can do here is copy the question and then transpose the integrand on the right, transpose it to the left side to combine them, resulting to 2 times the integral of e to the x sine x dx is actually equal to this one you can factor out e to the x, leaving you with sine x minus cosine of x. Therefore, the answer, e to the x sine x dx is simply e to the x over 2 sine x minus cosine of x plus c. So we basically just transpose um, the integrand on the right to the left and then combine them. Hence, the coefficient 2. And then divide both sides by 2. That's why you have here e to the x all over 2. So typically, that's what you do when the um, question or the integrand is recurring. You could apply more than one time the integration by parts. So for another example, let's have this, x squared sine x dx. So for this example, you have a combination of algebraic and trigonometric. So that means for that, maybe we can say that u is the algebraic portion, x squared. And then the dv is the trigonometric, sine x dx. So for this, the du is simply 2x dx, and then the v is negative cosine of x. So applying integration by parts, uv minus the integral of v du, that's negative, x squared cos x minus integral of v du, so that becomes plus 2x 
cos x dx. So looking at this one, again, just like the previous example, you have another combination of two functions which can't be expanded. So this one is another form of algebraic and trigonometric. So this one, algebraic and trigonometric. So for our new letter U, still it's the algebraic portion. And then the DV still is the trigonometric portion. So cos x dx, therefore, the DU for this is simply dx. The V for this is simply sine of x. So when you reapply integration by parts, but first let's copy the first function. Let's bring out the 2. The whole thing becomes uv minus integral of v du. So that's u, v, so x sine x minus integral of v du. So it's simply sine x dx. So this one will give us x squared cos x plus 2x sine of x. And then the integral of sine x is negative cosine. Since there's a negative sign, it becomes plus 2 cos x plus c. So this would be the final answer. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you very much. And if you have some recommendations, please um, comment on the video. Thank you.